G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be talking about adding lighting effects to your paintings in Photoshop. Now this in my opinion is one of the most fun parts of painting in Photoshop because it's usually towards the end of the process and it gives you the most immediate and uh, drastic changes in result to your uh, somewhat raw painting becoming more finished. It really adds that polish that brings it all together. And so what we're going to be using in our example today is this painting here. Now this is the finished product, but I'm going to take a step back and focus on this character here on the left and talk about uh, and go through and show you how I got from my uh, flat painted image to adding the light effects to her. So the reason I'm using this example uh, is that there's a very contrasting uh, light scheme in the sense that we have this blue frosty glow emanating from behind her which is directly hitting the back of her body and then we have on this side of the image all this fire and all this blazing heat which I wanted to show both of those hitting her body. Now, before I got to the process of painting the lighting, this is what I had to work with. Now, if I hide my effects and the ice and the clouds and all that stuff, this is the character that, that I've painted. And as you can tell, it's pretty flat. Now, I personally like to work this way. Uh, everyone kind of finds their own painting style and uh, the, the way I go about it, which I find pretty easy because then you're adding the color and lighting effects to it after is really simple and easy to edit. So what I do is uh, I do my painting in the, the colors that I'm using in that palette uh, using lights and shades of that color. So not messing with the, the um, different color lights until later. And so I completely finish the, the basic painting of the character and then I add the colored lights. And so, yeah, and if you want to learn kind of how I go about my painting process, I have heaps of other tutorials on my channel going through that. But for now, I want to specifically focus on lighting. So what I'm going to be doing is, and I have this all merged to one layer here, I'm going to add another layer on top of this and holding Alt, I'm clicking the lines between the, uh, the two layers. And this creates a clipping mask. Now I'll show you what this does. Now I'll just uncreate that so I can give you an example. If I select a nice bright red paint here and I do a squiggle like this, if I alt and then click that line, you'll see how it forces it to stay within the uh, area of that character. So this lets me color in as much as I want and not worry about going over the lines or anything like that. Okay, so that's a very useful trick in itself and in doing the lighting based stuff, it's really, really useful. So I'm gonna select my brush and I'm gonna make it fairly large. I'm gonna bring it up, should be about this big and keep it at 0% hardness. And I'm gonna bring the opacity to about 50% just for this trial, cause I'm gonna bring it down less. And the first thing I do is I select uh, an estimate of the color I might want to use for the lighting. So I'll select this light yellow here and I'm just going to paint this really rough color here. Now it's not meant to look pretty. What we're going to be doing is going through the blend modes in this tab here in Photoshop. So if you hit here where it says normal and you'll see all these things, I click it to select the tab and then close it again. And then as I using uh, use the arrow keys on the keyboard, I can go down through the different ways that it can affect the character. And so when I hit here on overlay, I see this really nice burning sort of glow that the yellow gives it. And so I figure I want to use that. Now to implement that, I can tell that it's much too strong and this was just our sample. So now I'm gonna delete what I've done and keeping this layer on overlay and having my brush selected, I'm going to bring the opacity way, way, way down to about 4%. So it's really low. And I'm just going to start lightly tapping repetitively, adding bit by bit. And I'm going to up the opacity a little bit, bring it up to 8%. I'm going to layer on this yellow. Now it's really slow to see because you don't want to pack it all on at once. It's a slow additional process 
and uh, to show it with and without you can just hide and reappear the layer so you can see what kind of thing you're doing okay bring up the opacity a little bit okay. so you can see how very quickly that adds quite a strong lighting effect and we're starting to get the yellow glow now it was all quite fiery and this uh, begins to get the look I want but it's not quite strong enough so I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to select something of a uh, oops, something of an orange let's say around here let's bring our opacity up and this is just on normal at the moment just because I want to see different blend modes and I'm going to go through my blend modes and find one that I like. So I don't mind overlay again. What else have we got? So I kind of, I tend to flick through them pretty quickly. Okay, so overlay is probably the strong one again. So I'm going to go to overlay. Delete what I've done and then go through and add it and I'm going to bring my brush size down and this time because it's quite a more intense color and closer to the flames I'm going to bring the brush size down and keep this richer light just closer to the edges so the the yellow covers a much wider area I'm going to keep this orange much closer to the edges and that will kind of add a, a sort of grading um, area to the light so it doesn't just cover the whole thing. Okay, so now if I hide and re appear that orange, you can see that it kind of adds that rich look that I'm going for. And I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. Okay, so we've got our rich, warm glow. So if I hide and reappear both of those layers, you can see very quickly it adds that really cool. Um, well, not cool, opposite of cool, really warm and, and heated glow. So I'm going to add another layer to our clipping mask again by alt clicking the line between those two layers. I'm going to bring my brush size up again, bring up my opacity to test out a blue and we'll try something like this. So I'm just going to scribble that on. It doesn't have to be too careful and just go through my different blend modes and I want to find a really icy looking one. Oh, so again, overlay looks really good. Um, the reason I go through all of them rather than always going to overlay is sometimes I get surprised by one that just works really well. But in this case, overlay is the one again that I'm going to want to use. And I'm going to go through here and just keep it really close to the edge here of everything kind of in the immediate in the immediate area of this staff. To show that the light is really emanating from here, I'm gonna add that to the staff itself, add it to the hand and the edge of all the things on this side of the character. It's really quite a strong light effect and it hits the back area of the torso as well so you can't be too scared with this stuff because you can always kind of just bring down the opacity uh, to lessen its strength because really strong contrasts in light can be really uh, definitive and lovely in, in, a, in an art piece so you can see how already that is really cool literally really cool <laughs> okay so i can make these layers visible and invisible and i can see very quickly how that lighting effect is improved now another thing i can do is uh by messing with the brightness and contrast of the original character layer i can affect the lighting so i'm going to do a couple of things i'm going to bring the yellows down slightly in opacity i'm going to select my character base layer and go up here to image and I'm going to go to adjustments and brightness contrast. 
Now I can mess with this and I'm going to bring up the contrast, bring down the brightness very slightly. So minus five and then up the contrast to 30. And you can see if I control Z back and forth between them, I've created a richer sort of depth to the character by upping the contrast and bringing the brightness down just a little bit. And there we have it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I really don't need to add much more. If I wanted to be really picky, I could add like some really edging sort of stuff, but there's really not too much more I want to do. Now, when I add my ice and my effects, and uh, in the context of showing the fire as well in the image, it ends up looking really cool. So you can see that there it is with, there it is without. With, without. So it really does make quite a difference. You can be more extreme, but uh, this is personally my favorite part in painting an image because it really just adds a lot of polish really quickly where you feel like, okay, I've got, I've got a finished image here. It's looking pretty cool. Then all of a sudden you chuck in all the effects and lighting and bam, it's a completely different sort of beast and it's just really cool. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, the reference files are in the uh, link in the description so you can access this file itself, maybe muck around with your own lighting effects. Until next time, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.